What's up, what's up guys? How's it going? Scott Tori here. Man, we actually just had a pretty awesome war. I came over to a friend of mine's Bones Deuces clan um, over here at PB's Punishers, also a good friend of mine, uh, Power Bang. So shout out to both of those content creators. Bones Deuce uh, streams on Twitch, just like I do. Twitch.tv slash Bones Deuce. Um, and of course, Power Bang, I'm sure you guys know on his YouTube as well as Twitch. Um, so I came over here, over to PB's Punishers to do to do a spin. Um, not only with Bonesy, but my friends Visions, Jenny. There's a bunch of people over here that are just hanging out and having a good time. This this was actually a really, really fun war. Um, so I can't take full credit for the uh, <laughs> for the plan for this attack. Uh, my friend Jeffy actually developed the plan for it and executed initially. Um, however, had a second wall breaker fail on his um excuse me he had a wall breaker fail on his second break um so and the plan itself was flawless so it just had to get into that second second layer of walls and um so I, this is just me rerunning the attack and actually i actually had the exact same wall breaker fail um and i actually got really lucky once in a blue moon guys once in a blue moon your queen can make a smart decision believe it or not sometimes she will shoot the correct wall. I know. I know it's it's baffling, and I know I know it's very unbelievable. But and you know what? I'm gonna show you tonight a situation in which the queen actually shoots the correct wall and picks up that 10 v 10 triple. So I was pretty lucky. Um, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. <coughs> All right. So before we hit play, just a little bit of an overview of the uh, of the mission. The mission plan we're gonna do a queen queen charge hogs um, and when you're initially looking at this base you can kind of see how it can be divided that top half portion essentially this compartment this compartment and this compartment now imagine those being cleared out and gutted all you have left is just this this uh, essentially a landing strip for hogs to just run right through and clear out um, especially with only what one two defenses there leading directly into that that second inferno tower yes it's a level three However, there's not a whole lot of time between those defenses and going directly into it. So you can actually just drop a heal spell instead of having to freeze it. If, they, if the hogs were going to get locked up um, for, for a little bit longer time before going into it, then you'd have to drop that, that freeze. But otherwise, anyway, um, so we're going to start our queen up top. Her mission is going to be to take out this expo, which is just actually added value. It's not a necessity, but that's extra added value. Um, ultimately, her real goal is to take out this enemy archer queen. And then the Inferno Tower, Wizzy Tower. That's her main mission. Inferno Tower, and, um, Archer Queen, Clan Castle Troops, and Wizzy Tower. Bam. And that should be plenty of space for the uh, for the hogs to come through. Now, you're thinking to yourself, okay, you can't, you can't generally leave a barbarian king just standing alone by himself without, you know, without being taken care of, especially running through hogs. Because um, that king will, will absolutely just destroy a hog rush. Um, so we're actually going to utilize our barbarian king and do what's known as a king trade. Um, and we're just going to drop him over here. Hopefully he makes it over to the king and takes him out. In fact, during my attack, I actually believe the king went the wrong way. And I got, a, <laughs> I got lucky and uh, my hogs made it through out of his radius in time. Um, I don't remember what it was that distracted him or not. I guess we're going to see in this replay, but that was the initial mission, the plan. It's just, you know, things don't always go according to plan. You have to improvise and execute accordingly. Um, so, with that being said, let's go ahead and just show the attack and then and watch it progress. So, the queen drops. There's the, uh, the healers behind her. Uh, you bring that extra one just in case, you know, <clears throat> the difference between Town Hall 10 walks, charges, versus the Town Hall 9s, you bring those five healers instead of just the, the average four there. Um... She takes out that Tesla, cuts into the base right here. I believe I run a rage spell going into, there it is, yeah. I charge her in. Uh, she takes out that Expo. <coughs> Excuse me. You would think this cough would be be gone by now, but you know. Um, all right, so I drop that baby dragon right there and see, look. I get this second, the second layer break right there was just unsuccessful. Now guys, think. Just looking at this right here. Had I been able to break through there, she would have, you would have just easily seen her go through that compartment and then go into the next 
area there and be able to accomplish her mission. Anyway, she does take care of the squishy CC. What I mean by squishy is just like things like baby dragon, anything that's not tanky, like uh, like hounds or golems, um, that can easily be cleared with just a poison spell. All right, so you see those uh, those skellies pop out, try and take out her healers. Luckily, we still had some residue, uh, residual poison spell there, and she takes that out. And then cuts in and grabs this enemy archer queen. I actually was a little bit nervous there. I was like, oh, do I still have enough oomph on my rage spell to, to take her out? But she, but she did. She did. I got pretty lucky. Now, right here, excuse me, you'll see the hog deployment. I dropped, I actually dropped a, uh, a couple up top first. I should have zoomed out before this. Um, to hit that archer tower, I did not do a three finger drop. I did consider it, but instead of doing a three finger drop on these three different defenses right here, uh, I went ahead and went one at a time so that way the hogs would actually meet up in the middle at a route around the same time if That makes sense. So I'm gonna drop the archer. This was an archer tower I'm gonna drop those hogs first let it start to begin to develop then I'm gonna drop these hogs and Then drop these hogs so that way they eventually hit that uh, that inferno tower at the exact same time And as you can see I dropped my barbarian king over here and he ended up pathing right and yeah, that kind of messed up the plan because he was supposed to come over here and take out this enemy Barbarian King. And as you can see, the Barbarian King already locked eyes with the uh, with the hogs there. So I was pretty salty about that. Now, as this attack starts to develop, I go ahead and drop the heal spell. King is already beaten away at those hogs. It's just it's a it's a mess. Um, Queen taking out that town hall there. Hogs down south. That's actually the CC hogs. We're gonna get those maxed out town hall eleven type of hogs. Um, a little bit farther back in. I want to keep those ones alive. Um, King, they, they, yep, they do make it just out of his radius. They're able to clear those defenses and get out of his reach. Now, right here, this is what I'm talking about, guys. This, this is what made the attack. This right here is why this was a 10v10 triple. She locked eyes with this junction wall. Now, normally, you would think to yourself, man, an archer queen, she would probably go for like this wall or like this one's empty so she'll probably go for this wall or something for something ridiculous like that the best possible scenario and keep in mind guys there's like nothing over here there's nothing in this compartment for her she is just smart enough to take out this wall right there and that that opens up the compartment to be able to take out these defenses this defense this elixir pump and then eventually actually get into this compartment and take out that inferno tower so look at that queen MVP right here, especially as these hogs start to dwindle. I already utilized my final heal spell and they're going into this back end whizzy and then straighten that level three inferno tower. No way those hogs would be able to do it by themselves. Absolutely no way. So the queen cuts in as you can see you're up there a little bit closer to the one, two o'clock. Um, hogs get cooked over here by the seven, eight and then bam, she starts making her way over. Now keep in mind, I've got my cleanup troops down, down toward the bottom portion of that base. I'm um, starting to cycle their way over. I'm hoping she gets that Inferno Tower before they get within that Inferno Radius. Um, I'm holding off on her phase just because I had a feeling there's got to be some kind of giant bomb or something. I, I, I had to hold off on it, um, which I'm glad I did because there it is. It popped up. Then I popped her phase. I was waiting for it. Of course, of course there would be a second giant bomb right there. That one I didn't, <laughs> did not predict. And then that was it. That's all she wrote. Smart move. As you can see, like I said, that junction right there is what forced her to be able to go in here and take out that residual buildings left from that hog run and then moving back over into this compartment to take out that inferno and the rest of those defenses especially that wizard tower and then that's all she wrote man let me tell you what that was that was a pretty good feeling landing that one and that's no that's no uh no lightweight town hall 10 we're hitting that's not like an early I just upgraded Town Hall 10, you know, I'm still figuring out Town Hall 9. No, that's a that's damn near max Town Hall 10 right there that we're watching. Um, so that was a pretty cool attack. <laughs> um, so yeah, guys, have faith in your queen. I understand, believe me, I've been playing this game since it came out. What was it like, just over five years ago now? And I will be the first to tell you, the queen does not always make the smartest decisions when it comes to wall execution and where her pathing. Um, so in this case, it was just one of those lucky scenarios I had to show you guys. Now, since we're while we're at it, I actually want to show you a another sexy town hall 10v10 triple that occurred. Um, actually, let me go ahead and bring it up right here. <laughs> Another Queen Charge Hogs, um, hands down, Queen Charge Hogs just absolutely my favorite attack comp right now. I, 
you know, it has a lot to do with me being a ground pounder as a Town Hall 9. A lot of you guys out there that are that are Town Hall 9s right now, and you just, you're just you not very comfortable with the air attacks, and you just kind of stick to those stone hobos, those, you know, ver all kinds of various different witch slaps, all that stuff. Um, it will shoot you in the foot when you do go to Town Hall 10. Take it from me, of all people. Um, however, it will help a little bit in as far as being able to familiarize yourself with these with these Queen Charge Hogs, Queen Charge Miners, Queen Walks. Um, a Stone Hobo is definitely um, a very versatile attack able to use at 10v10. I actually got a 10v10 with, with Stone Hobo um, this past weekend's arranged war. Um, and yeah, so far it's it's kind of interesting seeing Town Hall 10 develop. Month by month, new metas are coming out constantly. I just absolutely love it. So as you can see, she comes in, grabs that Inferno Tower, pulls CC, takes out Enemy Queen. Uh, and that's the main goal, guys. Let me hit pause real quick. Guys, you have to remember, the main goal, anytime you're doing these 10v10 Queen Charge Hogs, your goals are at least one Inferno Tower, Enemy Archer Queen, preferably Barbarian King. As you can see from that last attack, I just, I just straight up got lucky by not taking out the King. Um, and then the enemy CC. Those are your three main goals. CC, Inferno, Heroes. Now with that being said, you kind of want to get that added bonus by getting those Wizzy Towers, those Expos, all of that to kind of help facilitate that Hog Run. But just remember, that's one of the main things you, you've got to keep in mind um, as far as mission accomplishment in regards to this Queen Charge. Now obviously there's going to be those situations where um, the mission's gonna change just a little bit. I'm just talking more on the standard front, like on an average Queen Charge Hog attack. That's how it's gotta be. So as you can see, the free spell over the uh, the second Inferno Tower is because he had a little bit more defense around it. He's gotta hold it up, especially with this with this Wizzy Tower um, locking eyes with those hogs and and you know outputting that damage. You've gotta hold that freeze up because you can't heal over an Inferno Tower. It doesn't work. You gotta freeze it up. He drop that heal so that way they're they're getting um, refreshed while that Wizzy Tower is you know pounding at him. And as you can see, Queen's still alive, looking healthy. Hogs still got plenty, making it up there by the 12 o'clock. Very gorgeous, ex gorgeously executed attack. Excuse me, I know my English uh, <laughs> sometimes, but um, he still got his CC and his and his brought with him hogs, and very nicely done. Very nicely done. He even still has that King there once again. Once again, I guess it goes to show you don't you don't always necessarily need to kill the king, but let me tell you what, more times than not, if, if he doesn't go down, it's usually bad news for those hogs. Um, but just kind of keep that in mind, guys. You just, you never know. You never know with this game. Uh, <laughs> so, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping it up. I just, I had to share those attacks with you. Um, a little bit of, a little bit of news on the front. It is true, it is true, I have, I have uh, announced my association with the uh, Buy Forever family, guys. I am I am still helping the Immoral War family rebuild. As you can see, I'm still flying the banners behind me. Soon that will be changing to the Buy Forever uh, banners and stuff behind me. However, and I'm trying to look, find the, the best way to explain what's going on. With the Immoral War family, we're just kind of attempting to rebuild a little bit more in the shadows and out of the uh the media's sight kind of focusing on clan business if that makes sense and just kind of rebuilding slowly you see a lot of these a lot of these elite clans kind of starting to do that they're they're pulling out of the um the public eye you look at war whales for example actually perfect example um pulling out of the limelight doing that rebuilding fail the rebuilding phase and then coming back just strong um, so during that time frame, you know, I've decided to join up with the Buy Forever family. I'm going to be doing some some media coverage for them, live stream coverage, CWL coverage, um, NDL coverage, YouTube videos, you name it. I'm going to be I'm going to have an account in the Moral Thieves, of course. You know, I at the end of the day, I'm still an extremely loyal clanmate. I can't just leave abandoned clan family like that. So I'm going to have my account over in the Moral Thieves, and I'm going to have my main account, Scatoria. Uh, with the Buy Forever family as well, um, and then executing the tax. I'm going to be rostering with Buy Forever, uh, so you're going to see me a little bit on, on the both sides of that front. Um, however, primarily in the Buy Forever side. Um, so I just kind of wanted to clear that up. If you guys had any questions about it, I know it sounds super confusing. In my head, it makes a lot of sense, but if you have any sort of questions about it, just feel free to, to send me a DM. Um, I know sometimes it, it takes me a little while to catch up on them. 
Uh, but yeah, by any means, by any means, I appreciate your guys' support during this. I know anytime you try and rebuild a clan family, it's the struggle is it takes a toll. And we had a lot of clan leadership just they had, they were carrying too much weight and they had to go into retirement. Um, this that's what kind of forced this movement and um, kind of forced them to kind of go into the shadows and continue the rebuild there instead of just doing it in the public eye. And yeah, I mean, I'm happy to facilitate that as well as, you know, I'm, I'm also really excited to be a part of the Buy Forever family now and, and start showcasing those attacks. And they've, they've got some really great hitters there. And I can't wait to start producing content um, from that family. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys hanging out tonight. And, you know, I don't think I have an ending now. Um, so yeah. Oh, and if you haven't already, follow me on, on Twitch, twitch.tv slash scottoria. For live coverage I do my I like to do my 10v10 and now I kind of want to start practicing some more 10v11 attacks live on stream sometimes I don't it's kind of depending on work schedules of course uh, but for the most part I like to execute those live so if you want to catch these live streams twitch.tv slash and I'll see you guys there